Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. For the next few moments, the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart a word called America's Perfect Storm coming in 2020. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21, one verse of scripture from the time of the prophet Elijah. I want to look at this very carefully because to me it describes America, which is divided exactly 50-50 down the middle. 50% that consider themselves progressives and liberals or moderate liberals, 50% that consider themselves moderate to conservative to very conservative. And whenever you hear any politician promise you to pull the country together, it will not happen. I'm not being negative, but I want to explain why. When you are someone that says that it's legal and okay to take the life of an infant, I'm not going to agree with you on that. When you mock a traditional marriage and make fun of it, I'm not going to agree with you on that. When you allow unjust weights where you judge people one way, but you won't live that way, politicians, you're not going to I'm not going to stand with you, so we're not going to come into agreement. Here's what Elijah said. Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. I'm going to begin in 70 A.D. I'm going to take you for a moment to the destruction of the temple. The Roman 10th Legion had breached the walls and the gates of the city of Jerusalem. For several years and months, there had been Jewish rebels, families, men and women and children that had been behind the walls of Jerusalem. They had actually stored up enough grain to survive for years, but someone set the grain house on fire. And when they did, there was a grain shortage. Josephus said the famine became so bad they were boiling their shoes to eat them in the area of Judea. The only thing they could eat was straw. When Titus, the Roman general that would bring the destruction, came and saw where men had used the restroom, he looked and saw it was nothing but straw and said they have no strength, they have no protein, they have no energy. All they're surviving on is straw. We can take the whole city and destroy it completely. They torched the temple that day. Josephus said that not only did they kill people, but there were so many bodies that you couldn't even see the platform of the temple mount and the rock. There was so much blood, it flowed like water. And when they destroyed that temple, as you know the story, they finally allowed the flames to cease, and the gold in the temple had melted down the walls, and the Romans, in their greed, toppled every stone in the temple to peel the gold off of it and take it back with them as a treasure. And this is the words of Jesus. Not one stone will be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. The city was in ashes. The city was in smoke. Don't forget that statement. Josephus said there was about 1.1 million people that died in that. Most scholars say that is an exaggerated figure. It may be. However, there were 97,000 Jews that lived and were taken as slaves on ships, many of them to Rome and later scattered. The Arch of Titus sits in Rome today. It's very old. It's well over 1,900 years old, and carved on that stone are the Jewish slaves coming from Jerusalem, marching into Rome. And there they see, you see the menorah in that arch. You see the table of shoe bread. You see the silver trumpets because they paraded the Jews in the streets and mocked them and listened and gave honor to their false gods for defeating the God of the Jews. But then something strange happened. In the year 79 A.D. in southern Italy, there was a big mountain called Mount Vesuvius. The people living there at that time, according to history, were unaware that it was actually a volcano that had not erupted in quite some time. It was at the base of that Mount Vesuvius, a city called Pompeii existed. Pompeii was Rome's second largest city, Rome being the first, Pompeii being the second. Pompeii was the pleasure city. I mean, when you wanted to go and have pleasure... In the flesh, you went there. There were huge brothels there. There was possibly 35 total. In fact, we went to tour on Pompeii, and our guide said, please keep the children outside. They don't want to see what's in this building. If you adults would like to go in, I'll explain it. He took us into a brothel, and painted in the, on the wall was every sex act imaginable, and all you did was walk in and say, I want that one, and I want that done, and then you paid for it. 
Now, I want to say something about this because this comes, becomes very, very significant. There were slaves, there were orgies, there was drunkenness, there was perversion. However, something happened at Pompeii. At Pompeii in 79 AD, there was a destruction that occurred because of Mount Vesuvius. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, it spewed fire, lava, and ash, and gas so suddenly that the people could not escape. Many of them tried to get in ships and flee, if you've ever seen the movie. Many of them tried to get out, but the, it happened so quick. 2,000 people died in the ash and was buried. That is a photograph I took at Pompeii, having visited it. There are many of these individuals that when this was excavated years ago, dogs, that both of their legs are crossed, a pregnant woman hanging onto her baby, that they have encased the remains and hardened it to where you can see how people died breathing the gas from Mount Vesuvius. Now here's something interesting. Vesuvius comes from the word Vulcan. And Vulcan was a god of flame and metal. Here's my point. I told you about 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the temple. Nine years later, Pompeii, the second largest Roman city, is destroyed. Why am I telling you that? Because guess when Jerusalem was destroyed on the Jewish calendar in 70 AD, the 9th of Av, the most negative date on the Jewish calendar all year long. Guess when Pompeii was destroyed nine years later on the 9th of Av. When the fire came, and all of the lava came, and the fireballs came. Listen very carefully. Pompeii had four temples to four idol gods, and all four were completely destroyed. In Pompeii, someone surviving, they think they may have come back for some goods, but they took the time to write something on the wall. And this is scary. They wrote the last words, Sodom and Gomorrah. They knew the story of Genesis chapter 19, how that God in his judgment, because of the iniquity of the city, had sent a fiery judgment to burn Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground. And they said, now we are Sodom and Gomorrah, and we are seeing a repeat of the judgment of God. There is a law of God that American people, unless they're Christians and believe the Bible, they don't understand. And when you talk about it publicly at any given time, you're going to be mocked and ridiculed. And that law is this, that judgment comes, according to Genesis 15, according to the book of Revelation, when the cup of iniquity becomes full, when individuals refuse to repent. In a city called Bethshan, which is located in the Jordan Valley in Israel, we go there every year on our Israel tours, it is, you see the evidence. In fact, now it's been put back together. I'm talking about the columns and the streets. But when I first saw it excavated, all of those huge columns were lying on the ground in one direction all the way down. They took me to the end of Bashan and they said, do you know what we found under this column? We found a man, a skeleton of a man with gold coins in his hand. As the earthquake was happening, he ran into the temple to grab the gold from the God and he was leveled by a column weighing tons where he lay for over a thousand years. In the city of Babylon, Mystery Babylon, in the book of Revelation, it says that the, there is a city where a woman has a golden cup in her hand full of the blood of the saints, and yet God sends the judgment because of the shedding of innocent blood. When you go to Babylon and you go to the book of Daniel and you read about Nebuchadnezzar having that, that, that handwriting on the wall, if you'll read it in Daniel, it will say that behind the candlestick, a handwriting of a man occurred. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you what that candlestick was. It was the menorah from the temple. And he brought the temple vessels. Read it. He was drinking from the vessels of the temple. He brought the temple treasures in. And the night that he mocked the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and took sacred vessels and drank from them and had iniquity, that night was the city overthrown by the hand and the finger of God. I want to tell the American people something, and you can laugh at me if you want to, but in Washington, D.C., God's handwriting is coming on the Capitol building in the name of Jesus, and you better get ready to pay attention to what he's about to tell you and what he's about to say. According to Josephus, 
When the temple was about to be destroyed in 70 A.D., there were cosmic signs that happened. One of the strange signs that happened between 66 and 69 A.D., according to Josephus, who was an eyewitness, he said that there was a gate of the inner court that took 20 men to open and close. And one night, one night, it opened and closed all by itself. And then there was a voice heard that the priest heard say, Let us depart from hence. There were two interpretations to that event, according to Josephus. There were men there that said, this is great. God has just shut the gates on the Romans. He shut the gates on the enemies. This is a sign, let us depart from hence, that we're going to be protected from the enemy who's going to have to depart from us. Wise men said that is not true. What has just happened is God has left the temple. And now... He has said, we are now departing from your temple and we are about to be devastated and we are about to be destroyed. I want to suggest something to you. As I move from Jerusalem and as I move from Pompeii and as I move from Bashan and from Babylon and the city of Jerusalem, I want to talk for just a moment before we get to the depth of this message about 2020. I want to talk for a moment and ask you a question and that is this. Why is it that some nations on the earth seem to be blessed and others seem to have extreme levels of poverty? One that I can tell you about that I know quite a bit about is Haiti. You can go to the Caribbean and go to every island and you'll see people that are are blessed and prosperous and you'll see plants and you go to Haiti and it's like something has happened to the land in Haiti. I was told many years ago by a man that was a missionary there for 20 years, he said, let me tell you what happened to Haiti. Haiti was under French control. The Haitian people were part French and part African, but a lot of them came over from Africa to that part of, the, of, of, of Haiti to live. But they hated the French so much that they decided to give their island years ago over to the devil. And they dedicated it to Satan. And then they, they got into something called voodoo. And it was a mixture of everything. As a matter of fact, let me tell you how powerful voodoo was. And this came from the missionary who passed away several years ago. I was in his home and he said, Perry, when I was in Haiti, Papa Doc was the leader of Haiti. Papa Doc was very heavy into voodoo. When John F. Kennedy did the blockade to Haiti with the ships, he said Papa Doc had something very weird about him because he would not go out in public. He was afraid of demons and spirits. But he would go out in the month of November on a certain day. And that's where he felt free in protection. It happened to be that time frame that he put a, he put a, made a doll of President John F. Kennedy and stuck the needles in the back of its head and commanded that a demon spirit would find someone to kill him. And lo and behold, on the day that Papa Doc would leave his palace is the day John F. Kennedy was shot in Dallas, Texas. Now, I could go on and talk about it, but let me talk about just the extreme poverty. So a missionary asked God one time, and I wanted to say something about curses and voodoo. You don't have to worry about that when you're under the blood of Jesus and you're living for God. And just because people go to church or even maybe go to mass doesn't mean they're born again. You know that as well as I do. Even in Protestant churches, it's true. But a missionary asked God one time, why is there so much poverty in this country? And I'm going to give you a statement that I want you to remember that begins my message right now. I quote from the missionary, God will not bless a nation past their vote. Maybe I need to tweet that and just make it known and get it real controversial like all this other stuff. God will not bless a nation past their vote. Meaning that if you decide to make a choice and you make a bad choice, God is not going to bless you over top of your bad decision. Now, this brings me to where we are in the United States because we're going to get into something right now, and I realize if I air this on Manifest, it will be quite controversial with some people, but my middle name is Perry Controversial Stone, in case you haven't found that out. But I want to say something. There's two sides to America. There's conservative people to moderate to conservative. As we said a moment ago, there's liberals to to radical liberals. The liberals now have a religion. And I'm going to prove to you in the next few moments, this is a religion. They believe they are called to be the saviors of the planet. However, the problem is, instead of using practical ideas that I believe in, 
about trash and plastic and air and water, which is just practical stuff that all of us should believe in because we love what God gave us and we need to take care of it. Their ideas are so radical. For example, they will move a road and stop it and spend millions of dollars to build all around it because they have found turtles, but they will kill a baby. They will say it's okay to abort up to the time it's born and even after. Can I tell you, if the liberals, and I'm talking about the radical group, if they had existed in the time of the dinosaurs, it would be horrible because nobody could take on Tyrannosaurus Rex without a problem. So instead of you eating dinosaur meat the way the ancestors may have, the dinosaur would be having you for dinner and your kids. A professor recently said, as reported on the Drudge Report, quote, to save our planet, we must consider eating people. Now, one candidate who is running for a high office also made the statement that one of the first things they will do when they become president is sign on the first day a ban on all fossil fuels. Now, in case you don't know what a fossil fuel is, that's the gas you put in your automobile. Now, I said, well, if we do that, we're going to have to go back to riding horses. But no, horses and cows expel gas. And so in case you haven't heard their next statement is we have to get rid of the cows who are blowing gas all over the planet. I'm going to be blunt whether you want me to be or not because somehow it's messing up the atmosphere. I want to tell you something. This is the kind of utter foolishness that can destroy a nation's economy within a year's time. Is everybody still tracking with me? Say, I am. I am. Now... If the progressives, the liberals, the radicals had been living in the time of the Bible, you're going to see eight headlines that would have been in the paper back in that day. Headlines number one, the crossing of the Red Sea. Ready? Wetlands trampled in labor strike. Pursuing environmentalists were killed yesterday afternoon by the radical right by being drowned in the Red Sea. If the radical left had been living in the time of the Bible and we would have seen the news report about David killing Goliath, it would have read this. David killed Goliath. Hate crime kills beloved champion. New danger as religious fanatics throw stones. If the liberal progressive, the radical left, had been living in the time of the Bible, the headlines about Elijah on Mount Carmel would not have been how God came through. And let's turn to God. Fire sends religious right into a frenzy. Elijah kills hundreds on the peak of Mount Carmel as fire burns, scorching the famous mountain. Oh, it gets worse. If at the birth of Christ, the liberal progressives would have been living, the newspaper would have read, couple removes animals from stable. <laughs> Animal rights activists enraged, threatening to sue the insensitive family in Bethlehem who took action due to all the hotels being filled to capacity. <laughs> Hang on. If the liberal left had been living in the time of Lazarus being raised from the dead, Fake news headlines would have read, Fundamentalist Preacher Raises a Stink. <laughs> Reading of Lazarus' will now delayed by conservative preacher's interference of the burial. Come on, help me somebody. <laughs> if the radical left had been living at the time of Jesus feeding the 5,000 a free lunch, the news would have said, FDA investigates safety of mass feeding program. Fish and bread provided to the 5,000 attendees at the local religious rally were not approved properly and prepared by the FDA regulations. <laughs> if the extreme leftists had been living at the time that Peter found the coin in the mouth to pay his taxes, administration demands Peter spread the wealth. <laughs> City leaders demand Peter shell wealth found in fish's mouth with the Galilean community. I hope you're listening. And finally, the fiery furnace. Here we go. Dangerous carbon released. Three men to blame. <laughs> furnace.
this illegally heated, heated seven times hotter than guidelines recommended. <laughs> now, that's hilarious, but you know like I do that in every one of those incidents, if the progressives had been living then, that's exactly how the news would have been read. Somebody help me say that's the truth. However, there is a brand new religion, and I'm about to go to the story of Jezebel and show you five things that I've never taught. I'm about to show you something that is so parallel to today that it's almost funny and shocking at the same time. The new religion in the United States is the new climate army. From the 1960s reports that I have read, Florida is already supposed to be totally underwater. Huge icebergs have already supposed to melt it and destroy all the coastlines. Rain is supposed to have stopped completely, and there is to be no snow. By the way, Montana just a week ago got 40 inches. Uh -huh. But here's my point, and I don't want you to miss this. There was an idol god worshipped in the time of Elijah, Ahab, Jezebel, Elisha, and throughout the Old Testament called Baal, B-A-A-L, and I'm going to say the English way we say it in the South, Baal. Baal worship. This was an idol god, pay attention, that the Israelites and the worshipers who had become apostate in Israel, I'm going to say the Israelites, the apostate Israelites, and surrounding nations believed, listen carefully, could control the climate. Instead of them believing there was a god who made the sun, moon, and stars, who controlled the rain seasons and the fall seasons. And if you live right, he'll send the rain in due season, according to Malachi. And if you don't, he'll hold the rains back. Instead of them believing what the Word of God said, they believed that Baal controlled the climate and you had to sacrifice to Baal and pray to Baal in order to have a successful climate that would produce everything that was proper. However, there was a man that lived in that day called Elijah the prophet, and he will come at the time of the end. Now, don't miss this point. Malachi 4 and 5 says, I will send you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, here's my point. Who did Elijah have to encounter in his day? Ahab and Jezebel. Those are the two people in the theme. She even comes over to the second king's time when Ahab has been killed in battle. She's still around. So who did they encounter? Ahab and Jezebel. If Elijah the prophet in his coming encountered Ahab and Jezebel, may I suggest to you that the spirit of Elijah that is in the earth today bringing forth an awakening that the same spirit of, not the spirit out of their body, we're talking about an attitude, a way of thinking, a characteristic, the spirit of Ahab and Jezebel are going to be released. Here we go. I'm about to give you the parallels that's going to blow you mind, your mind, and I'm about to show you Jezebel had what what is called a new green deal. I'm happy to announce that our 2019 international camp meeting messages are now available on CD and DVD. My first message was titled Deities on Trial. In this never before preached message, I will expose how Christ's miracles and ministry was an actual attack on the false gods of Rome and Greece. You will see how Christ mocked the idols Janus, Castor and Pollux, Hades and even Nike. People expressed that they'd never heard a message like this, and this word brought forth many miracles of healing in the altar service. The second message, Confusion in America's Prophetic Camps, is where I expose four prophetic beliefs that are being propagated today. The belief that the rapture is a false doctrine, the belief that the Antichrist has already come, the belief that the tribulation is past, and also the teaching that we are in the first half of the tribulation. I expose these ideas as incorrect. And I believe this prophetic information that you're about to hear is going to help you understand the times in which we're living. I then taught the prophetic meaning of 2020 and 5780, which is the Jewish New Year. Taking the Gentile and Jewish New Years and using the Hebrew alphabet and picture graphs of the corresponding letters, I boldly predicted the prophetic themes of spiritual significance of the next 12 months based on rule number 29 of the 32 rules of Hebrew hermeneutics. This year lines up with Genesis 48 and Joel 2. Since 2012, this method has been accurately used to predict the themes, patterns, and even events that would unfold that year and has not missed yet. Let's cover in advance what 2020 holds. Friday night's message was called America's Perfect Storm Coming in 2020. Learn the five parallels in the days of Jezebel being repeated in America right now. 
I reveal how ancient history is being repeated, including the ancient bell spirit that is paralleling the new religion of climate change. Discover the historical difference between socialism and capitalism and hear the prophetic predictions for America's future. Discover three things on earth that radicals and atheists can never defeat. My final message was this, divorce, marriage, and remarriage. Beginning with the Hebrew word studies in early history, I explained God's plan for marriage and also reveal a strange fact showing that Moses was married to two different wives prior to the law. I then delve into complicated and controversial New Testament verses on divorce and the biblical instruction concerning divorce and remarriage based upon Christ and Paul's teaching. You will also enjoy Tommy Bates, John Kilpatrick, and Ron Carpenter. Each man preached a dynamic and eye-opening message that was very needed. You can now order the CDs in a beautiful album for your donation of $60 or more and ask for offer number 19IC CD. For the DVDs, for your donation of $95 or more, ask for offer number 19IC DVD. Call toll free right now, 1 888 21Bread, or you can write me at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, or go to perrystone.org. But whatever you do, get this material right now. You know, there were parts of this message I told him, I said, there are parts of this I will not put on, on worldwide television. And it's not just about me, it's about the stations who hear our, hear our program. We're pro very protective of them. But uh, I want you to hear the entire message. There were people that stood to their feet, literally under the power of God throughout this message. And uh, there's a perfect storm coming. And those who believe in the Bible and those who believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God have to be prepared for this which is coming. And so I want you to get the CDs or the DVDs. Remember, the DVDs have pictures that I show that I hope that you get those. And uh, let's just see what the Lord's going to do through His people. And I want to tell you something. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it talks about there's a restrainer on the earth. And only when that restrainer is removed can the Antichrist, the man, be revealed in his full identity. And when you talk about the church that is filled with the Holy Spirit around the world, 800 million people who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's an estimate around the world. Did you hear what I said? 800 million worldwide. And you see the outpouring of the Spirit that is continuing to happen every single day around the world. There's something that God is doing. And I want to say something to the body of Christ. Do not be discouraged what you see in politics. Do not be discouraged by what you see with the lies and the innuendos and the hate that is out there because there is a very large remnant of God's people, spirit-filled people who are out there who are going to do the work of God in these last days. Now, I want to tell you, and you're going to have to register for this. There's no fee to attend, but I'm coming to South Dakota the end of May to a expo center there, and I'm coming to Billings, Montana in July. I'm coming west. Now, you guys have asked me to come west, so I'm asking for your prayers, and I'm asking you to attend these meetings. I don't care if you have to drive across one or two states to get there. The information is at perrystone.org, and also I'll be doing a lot of YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. There's only one Perry Stone YouTube channel that's official, and I'll do some videos on there, and I want to update you with information, so be sure and follow us on our social media. And be sure and follow, follow us, of course, on the YouTube video media as well, the special things that we present. And don't forget your Christian station that is airing this program. Uh, also support the Christian stations and keep them strong in these last days because they need to keep this gospel going. See you next week.